Don't be shy, cause I, the life won't bring you down too far. This is Coogan Cassis for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. It's Thursday for Fight Camp Week 4. Week 4. Week 4, nearly over. We're still going. Still going. <laughs> uh, delighted to be joined by Mr Adam Smith. Nice to see um, you. Yeah, you're obviously used to the bubble now, Adam. Yeah, I mean, it's been, uh, it's been actually a great experience. I mean, it's been surreal. It's been different. Um, but I think we've all uh, adapted to what is at the moment the new norm. And I think the fighters have been fantastic, you know. I think Matchroom, you know, to give them huge credit, have put on a, a, t a terrific sort of four weeks. You know, they've, they've, everything's gone smoothly from the testing to the sort of feeling within the bubble. Um, everyone gets great access. It's, I think it's really well organised. Um, and I think along with obviously all the, the sky work that's been going on behind the scenes operationally in the build up to fight camp, I mean, hats off to all of them behind the scenes that have made this so successful because yeah, obviously it's down to the fighters and the fights on the night themselves, but the look of it and the, uh, the organization technical side that has gone into making this, um, you know, a must see attraction really fight camp. And I think every week it's almost got better and better and we're looking forward to a fantastic finale. But yeah, it's, it's weird being here, all sort of claustrophobic and locked up. I see you about a hundred times a day, you know, we bump into each other in corridors, but you know what? It's, uh, it's great to have the sort of boxing community together after so long in lockdown. And um, I think everyone's dealing with it really professionally. And uh, I think people look back on it and think that was a pretty cool time. You mentioned about the bumping each, into each other at corridors. It's all right for me and you to do it, but the fighters do it. I mean, it's a little bit different. It's been contained so far because obviously Gillian White put himself a little bit away, not too far it's away. It's not far, is it, not really? Far. <laughs> but it just kind of avoids Gillian yeah. White being in the hotel, I suppose, and walking past Bevetkin. And I mean, the heavyweights there at times volatile characters and sure just yeah and listen we, we joke but the corridors are pretty narrow aren't yes. they they are they are very sort of you know it's you can't really you fit Povetkin just about through that corridor but I think to get the two of them passing each other no I think that's sensible I think more than more than that Dillian just wants to do his own thing um I think he wants to make sure that you know all the food is right and everything is is as it should be in the last few days before what is a vital fight for him so he's taken himself slightly away you know into the into the mobile home, into the Winnebago. I hear the bed's very small in there. Um, Spencer all about a look round. I don't think he could fit, so I don't know how Dillian's doing it. But there we go. It's each into their own, and uh, he's cooking his own food, and he looks happy, and he looks really lean and well from his time in Portugal. So, um, a happy fighter's a dangerous fighter, Coogan, and I think that. You know, we expect a big performance from Dillian, but then Povetkin's been, you know, thudding the walls here. We can hear him and, and just sort of on the outside of the of the, the gym. Everything is so tight. There's no secrets here. And uh, he looks in great shape too. So I'm expecting a really good battle with the heavyweights. Eddie Hearn said this week that, quite interestingly, you know, if the fight between White, should he come through Saturday and Fury or, or Wilder, if that doesn't kind of materialise and one of those fighters was to vacate the title. It would leave Dillian White in a situation where he would most probably be elevated to full champion. In, in which case, the emphasis for Anthony Joshua would turn to Dillian White because he wants, above all, like all four belts. And obviously that fight would be slightly easier to make than any of the others, I should have. Imagine. They're all great fights, aren't they? I mean, first of all, I think we get through Saturday night. I think it's it's the biggest boxing night since uh, the incredible performance by Tyson Fury out in Vegas, which seems so long ago now, doesn't it? You know, in February when we were out there and he destroyed Deontay Wilder. As we wait for the trilogy, as we wait for Anthony Joshua's ring return against Kubrat Pula, if we've got this, and I think it's incredible that, you know, Eddie's managed to make White Povetkin and Taylor Pursoon in his backyard with no gate, you know, with no crowd. Obviously we miss crowds, obviously we want crowds back as soon as possible because it's what makes you know, the events, the, the nights themselves so fantastic and we miss that hugely. But I think it's, with the financials, with no gate, I think it's incredible that you know, this has even been made. So let's enjoy this one, let's see what happens. If Dillian wins this uh, and comes through, which is, you know, it's a, it's a tough fight against Povetkin, but you know, he should. Um, he's the younger guy. He's the uh, the fresher man. And, 
you know, he's in this position now where he will fight for the world title next. It's an interim belt if he gets elevated to to uh, full champion. I mean, it's been a two or three years of pain for Dillian, hasn't it, waiting around? I, mean, I don't think anyone would take that away from him. He's had tough tests all the way through. But yeah, we could always see that fight with Anthony Joshua. It's a huge fight. Joshua White, the third fight, the amateurs, the, the first professional fight, which was such a great one um, and seems again so long ago now. But, you know, we could have that. Um, we don't know. You know, is Wilder going to fight Fury in December? Is Fury going to fight somebody else in December? Frank's come out and said that he will fight in December. Um, you know, I swap messages with Tyson. He says that he wants Joshua and, you know, we, everybody out there wants the big fight, you know, AJ and, and Tyson Fury at some point. But realistically, it doesn't look like that's going to happen until 2021 at the earliest. So, look, let's see what happens after Saturday night. But I'd love Joshua and White to fight again. I think that'd be a great fight. Um, I'd also like Fury to fight White. So there's, there's loads. They could all fight each other. It's a, it's, a, it's a great sort of bunch of heavyweights at the moment. And uh, we need these fights to happen. Dillian said in an interview yesterday, you know, what, what are the great fights that haven't happened in history? And one of them he mentioned was Lennox Lewis and Riddick Bowe in the pros, which never materialized. You know, Lennox fought Holyfield a couple of times, Tyson too late, but he never fought Riddick Bowe. And, and, and that's a shame. So obviously it'll be a shame if, Joshua and Fury never fight, but I think they will. And I think that, you know, Dillian's right in there and amongst it. And um, if he puts a performance on against Povetkin, there's no reason why he shouldn't have one of those big fights. He should certainly fight for the WBC title next. So it'd be really interesting to see what Tyson does, whether he cares about the belts, whether he just wants that big fight with Joshua, or whether he will actually fight Dillian White, which I think will be a, a, another great one for the British fight fans. With AJ there as our, uh, as our guest on Saturday night as well on the uh, box office team, you know, that adds a a bit more spice as well. We remember him climbing up into the ring uh, after I think Dillian beat was it Derek for the second time at the O2 and there he was and they exchanged words there and AJ was very respectful and said look I'll, I'll give you the chance and then they were going to fight weren't they at Wembley uh, in April last year and he took the fight in New York was to be Jarrell Miller then Andy Ruiz. Heavyweight boxing is so unpredictable and volatile we don't know what's going to happen. So let's get Saturday night out of the way first and let's enjoy that because I think it'll be a great one. You mentioned there that obviously Joshua is part of the Sky team. Yeah. For the broadcast on, on Saturday night, they've made a few comments uh, via whatever platforms about Joshua saying that, you know, he might get in the ring and all that. And we know he can't get in the ring. On, <laughs> he's on not allowed, is he? Like because that. of the, the COVID he testing. To stay where he's at. And, <laughs> and Dillian's saying, if he, you know, if he gets in the ring, it's going to go off and all this I mean they could probably social distance whatever on Saturday night I mean Listen, I mean, look, they, they all have got respect for each other, haven't they? I mean, Joshua and Fury bumped into each other, as we know, on, on holiday, you know, and, and, jo and Joshua and White, have, you know, there is rivalry, there is animosity over the years, but they've got huge respect for each other. And, uh, you know, they, they both know that's a big fight. And let's see how it all unfolds. I, I know Joshua wanted to fight in Matcham Square Garden at some point during fight camp. Of course, you know, you look at financials and you knew he was going to fight at Tottenham and it's a massive fight against Kubrat Pulev. So we have to wait with that. But... Um, um, you know, it's great that Dillian's out the blocks quickly. He's had a, a long camp out in Portugal. I think he looks in terrific shape. Uh, you know, he's had Ruben Tabarez, a top conditioner out with him and, and, and a really good team. And, you know, despite the Mark Tibbs split, you know, it looks like he's in a great place. And Dave Colwell added to the corner, which I think is a, a great move. I'm a, a big friend, fan, colleague of Dave's and I think he's got that experience that might be needed uh, in the heat of battle against someone as uh, seasoned as Alexander Povetkin, should it get very tough. Um, so I think, uh, you know, all good signs. And I think... AJ's really excited about coming on Saturday. I think he's, he, he's loving fight camp. He's loving the fact boxing's back and I'm sure he wants to be a part of it. So uh, he'll be a part of it on the safe side of the ropes. And as you say, in the safe a part away from the, uh, the testing in, the, in, the, in that sort of own areas, you've got the commentary 10 meters away, the studio sort of 15, 20 meters away from the ring. So that is the part that is not tested. So um, yeah, unless they get you know, AJ COVID tested on, uh, you know, in time, then he, he can't get in that ring. I hope Dillian could jump a few, a few barriers and come over to see him in the studio, of course, I suppose. But let's see. Let's see. Let's just get oh, yeah, the fight on. Allowed, isn't it? Well, I mean, I, you know, listen, it's, it's gonna, there's going to be something, isn't there? There's going to be some fun between them. And, uh, you know, I think that's what it is. It's all, um, it's all hype. And let's see if they get in the ring. But AJ's got, you know, a mandatory. He's got business to take care of with Pulev. Tyson's got that trilogy with Deontay Wilder. So there's a lot of uh, fights that are tied up. A lot of um, upsets that could happen in the meantime. You know, you expect Fury to beat Wilder, but Wilder's always got that knockout power. You know, Kubrat Pulev is a solid, tough, experienced fighter, and Joshua can't take him lightly. So, 
you never know in the heavyweight game. And then there's Frank trying to get Daniel Dubois in with Dillian White. And, um, you know, Dubois is a, a terrific fighter. You know, is he ready yet for these guys? Frank obviously thinks he is. Uh, I'd take a little bit longer with Dubois. I'd like to see him in against uh, Joe Joyce first, which is, is obviously looking forward to that in, in the autumn. Um, and he'll be in the mix as well. And what's great, Coogan, is that they're all, they're all bar wilder, they're all British, and it's fantastic for us. So, but maybe while you know, the, the pandemic is happening or while the state of the world is as it is, we can get a lot of British duels made. So, um, you know, uh, AJ White, White Fury, AJ Fury, maybe they are the fights to be made you know, on this side of the uh, of the pond in the next 12 to 18 months, but the finances have to be right, and we know that's the problem. Dillian White's response to being linked with a fight with Daniel Dubois, as, as you said, Frank Warren put out this suggestion the other day, is, you know, why would I fight mm -hmm. Daniel Dubois mm -hmm. when, you know, I'll be sitting there mandatory for the mm -hmm. winner of Fury and Wilder? Does he have a point? I can understand that. You know, uh, Dillian, I don't think Dillian ducks anyone. I think that's proof on his record. You know, since the defeat to AJ, he's been with everybody, hasn't he? You know, he's had the two fights with Derek Chisora, Joseph Parker, Lucas Brown, you know, Oscar Rivas. Uh, it, it's just a huge list of, of, of fighters, even Marius Vac, you know, decent heavyweights all the time. And now Povetkin. So you can't, you can't grumble about Dillian saying, oh, I don't really think Daniel Dubois and I should share a ring just yet, because he probably thinks that, you know, Dubois is a British champion and he should fight for the WBC title next. Um, you know, if it was Dubois against him for the WBC title, that'd be different, I think. But I think Dillian deserves his opportunity. Um, he should fight for the world title. I think no one would begrudge him that after the amount of time he's waited around. And the fact he's taken these tough tests and he's excited us all the way through. He'll fight anybody. I think that's what people like about Dillian White. So I don't think, you know, he's... I think it's just not the right time for White and Dubois. I quite like a lot of the other fights that, you know, that have been mentioned. You know, Boatsy Yard, that you know, Frank has mentioned to Eddie. And who knows what will happen down the line with some of those. But I think personally, I think that, um, you know, Dillian should be fighting... Um, one of the big guys next, and if he's not, he should be the WBC champion. And uh, as you say, maybe if Joshua does want that belt, become the unified, and that's the fight he's got to make. So uh, interesting times ahead. How much of a gamble is it for Dillian this week? It's a massive risk, but it's a massive risk every time Dillian seems to get in the ring. You know, it's uh, he doesn't take easy fights. You know, I'm just looking up at the the boards around. There's no easy fights on on Fight Camp, and and it's another one. You know, um, has he got Alexander Povetkin at the right time? You know, Povetkin wasn't great. I didn't think out in Saudi, but. He's very dangerous with that left hook. Obviously, two people only have beaten him as a pro in, in uh, Vladimir Klitschko on points and Joshua by, by stoppage after a wobbly start. So we know how good Povetkin is, you know. He came over, he beat Huey Fury, he beat David Price. You know, he's got a long history. He was Olympic champion, you know. And he looks in great nick, you know. Despite the fact he's 40, he looks like he's 30, 35. So I, I just... I think Dillian at this point, and I think having seen the sort of the shape of him now and his attitude, and I think he's matured, and I think he just feels a sort of slightly different fighter six months sort of on after I, I last saw him, for example. And I don't know, I just I, I think it's going to be a hard fight, but I think that you know Dillian should come through. But you know, Povetkin, if Povetkin knocks him out and he turns it on its head again, then suddenly he gets himself back into you know, into the uh, the elite heavyweight, you know, world title challenging class. But um, it will be a shame if Dillian comes unstuck at this point, having taken so many hard fights, but that's heavyweight boxing. It's only one punch and, uh, you know, we know they both have massive power. So it's, um, you know, it's a musty attraction this Saturday night. It is a risk, but I think Dillian likes taking the risks and I think he often finds a way to win. He couldn't against Joshua. Maybe it was too soon for him. Maybe the shoulder was wrong. Maybe Joshua was just that little bit better than him. And maybe he'll prove it again, Joshua, a second time around. And, you know, I don't know. Would you put Dillian an underdog against Joshua, Fury and Wilder? Probably yes. Could he beat them all? He could do. Um, he's definitely in the mix. You know, um, you've got to say Tyson Fury would start a big favourite against him. Um, Joshua as well after their, you know, their first fight. But... I don't know. It's um, it's D Dillian is a Dillian's a tough battler, and, and he seems he seems as he said yesterday in in, in the in the press uh, data that here he he just said look he he finds you know he, he he he's very good at adapting in a ring, and he and he can find a way through. You know, I mean Joseph Parkin really stopped him late, but he held on. You know, and he'd done enough during the fight. It's a tough guy to fight, Dillian. I'd have thought all of them are thinking I don't really need Dillian White. Mm. Um. Obviously, the other talks about, much talks about rematch that's happening on this card is between Clayton Taylor yeah. and Delphine Gersoon. And you were saying to me yesterday, you've been, you've been watching a bit of Delphine while she's been here and 
she's uh, really up for this. She's really up for it. I mean, it's a it's a golden ticket. You know, she's a she's a great character, Delphine Pursuit. She's an inspector in the Belgian police force. She sees this as a break away from that. She sees this as as fun, not work. You know, she's had six weeks to prepare for um, this 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 golden ticket, which she never thought she'd get. You know, she felt strongly, as did many people, that she won in the garden in the real garden last year. Um, she was in tears, you know, she had to come to terms with that. And um, she gets her chance, her opportunity again. You know, Katie could have gone another route, as we know, she could have fought her mandatory. Um, I, I was really in favor of her fighting Pursuit again. I, I told Eddie and Brian and Katie that. Katie said to me straight away, I want that fight and I want it now. So it was, you know, we got it over the line. Eddie and Brian and, and, and uh, Team Pursuit got it over the line. It's fantastic, it's happening. It's a, I mean, if the Povetkin challenge is a dangerous one for Dillian. I mean, we know how dangerous Delphine Bassoon is for Casey Taylor because, as I say, a lot of people felt she won the first time around. So, yes, I've been really impressed with Delphine this week. I've watched her work out a couple of times. Um, I think she's really up for it. I think she's got a very, a very awkward style. She's come forward. She's aggressive. She's not got the boxing IQ and class of Casey Taylor. And if Katie Taylor goes back to what she's has served her so well as a as a standout amateur, the best amateur ever, and also is unbeaten in 15 fights now. But you know, I think she's got to use her her um, her head this time, Katie, and and box sensibly on the outside. I think she'll try and use speed and 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 class to 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 build up the rounds. And I think Delphine will be in her face the entire time. And the big question is when will Katie engage? If she does, there's no crowd. I think that might help. Katie with listening to Ross Enemy in the corner with the tactics. But I tell you what, I've been really impressed. And so is Spencer Oliver with Delphine Pursuit. She's hitting hard. She's got nothing to lose. Um, it would not surprise me if she uh, if she beat Katie uh, on Saturday night. But you've got to fancy Katie Taylor as favourite if she can box her way through. Um, but as we know, these these women's fights in the last couple of weeks have been you know, topsy-turvy, haven't they? You know, Natasha Jonas, I felt, deserved it against Terry Harper, albeit very close. Very, very good performance from Tasha. Terry was terrific at times. It was an amazing spectacle for boxing, a great, great fight. Let's hope we see it again. Um, and then you got the upset with Jessica McCaskill beating Cecilia Brackow. So, you know, these, these elite women are fantastic, aren't they, at the moment? And I expect another cracker on Saturday. The first one was terrific, and it didn't get enough attention because of what happened with AJ and Andy Ruiz later on in the evening. But it should have done, because it was one of the great fights. And that 10th round, I think, was one of the best rounds we've had in modern times in Sky Boxing. So uh, let's hope we have another great fight. I'm sure Katie won't want it quite as exciting. Uh, Delphine will, um, will try everything she can to win it. And uh, she believes she's taking the belts back to Belgium. So. Uh, uh, yeah, really excited about it. Um, just before we finish, just a, a mention on three very interesting fights in uh, Winters and Babbage. Yeah. And Chelly and also... Characters, Clay. aren't they? Babbage and Winters. 100%, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Clay and Congo as well. So. That's a really good fight, Coogan. I like all the fights on the card. You know, you start with... Uh, Cullen and, uh, and and Zach Chelly, and I think that's a that should be full of action. I think it's a really good uh, start for for the Sky Sports box office event. Um, you know, then you go into uh, Babich. You know, how good is he? I mean, he's obviously worked a lot with Dillian White, and they uh, they say he's tough as old boots. He's very exciting. I mean, he's three and at the moment. Let's see. Uh, it's a test, though. You know, this uh, the Americans are a, a decent fighter. He's been in with Joseph Parker. He he came out second best there, but he's had some upset wins and. It depends a little bit on sort of what mood he's in on the night. I think sometimes with uh, with Sean Dell, but he's a he's a he's a real live wire himself. So that'll be fun. That'll be a, a real hors d'oeuvre for the heavyweights. I really like playing Congo as a fight. I loved it when it was made. I went to the first press conference. There was a bit of needle between them. Genuine, genuine 50-50, which the trade have been, you know, really fascinated with. It's uh, it's a great fight. You know, is this Congo's time? Has he got the skill set? You know, we know. He's got the ability, but it hasn't really come out yet. And as for Clay, he's got momentum. He's got a bit more experience. So that's a real pick -em, and I'm really looking forward to it. So I think it's a fantastic night. But I think all the fight camps have been really good. You know, we had Eggington and Cheeseman. We had the, the Jonas and Harper fight. Obviously, Felix Cash last week and a, and a great card from top to bottom. Possibly the best of the lot. And although they weren't household names, you know, fantastic fights. Again, Courtney and Ball, what another good one. And... and you know, Conway Mansouri and the and Zelfa Barrett coming from behind against Eric Donovan. I think fight camps really produced 
quality. Um, and I think what I've noticed, Coogan, is that the fighters, they don't have to sell tickets. They don't have the worry there. They're all in one place in the bubble. OK, it can be a bit you know, boring and claustrophobic at times for them. But, you know, ultimately they're, they're zoned in and they're going into that ring up at the, uh, at the Matchroom HQ and they are absolutely right. You know, they've come out physically and mentally brilliantly from lockdown. There's been some terrific performances, even in defeats with Eric Donovan, you know, even in draws when Jonas didn't get it, you know, with, with Sam Eggington. There's been fantastic performances, even for the ones that haven't won. Shannon Courtney coming back after that first round knockdown. I think it's, it's brought something. I think the stage and the innovation that Eddie's had has brought something. And I think they've delivered even without a crowd. But, um, you know, hopefully we'll get crowds back in, in, in the coming weeks and months and uh, we'll get back to some sort of normality. But at the moment, I think Fight Camp has been brilliant. Just uh, a quick one on Canelo. Yeah. The WBC ordered him to fight. Yeah, I don't like that at all. The old room. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, Neither I've, do you. No one likes it. You know, we want to fight. We want to see Canelo fight Callum Smith or, or Billy Joe Saunders or one of them or, 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 or Triple G again. You know, it's, it's frustrating, isn't it? But it, it is, I think, down again to finances, down to money. He's got this huge deal with the zone, hasn't he? And Golden Boy. And, and, and look, it, that's their business. You know, but I want to see Canelo in the biggest fights. You know, I commented on the Canelo Jacobs fight, which was, you know, fantastic. It was a pleasure to see two two great fighters, and Canelo was just that little bit better that night. And you know, he's uh, he's he's one of our best, and we want to see him in with the the great the great fighters. And that's what I love about going back to Dillian. You know, he he, he just takes on tough customers the whole time, and you just want to see that. You know, if Canelo says, right, line them up. You know, I'll fight Callum Smith, then I'll fight Billy Joe, then I'll fight Triple G again. You know, we just everyone will be so, so excited about it, wouldn't they? But I, I was disappointed about that. Would it happen on September 12th? I mean, you know, it's a, it's, it's a very short... I can't, you can't, can it? You've got to think Canelo will fight some point later in the year and let's hope it's a, you know, a, a bigger fight than that. But, Adam um, Design said that they wouldn't approve that fight. I, I mean, would you? Um, would you for that money they're paying? Um, I mean, I don't know. Look, it's... You know, the WBC have ordered it. It's, you know, the, the title's vacant from uh, Benavidez is you know, losing it on the scales, which was a shame because then he went on and won. And he's a really good fighter too. It's, it's great up around that weight class, isn't it? And, you know, you want to see Canelo in these big fights. So, uh, look, I'm not his matchmaker. I'm not his promoter or his manager. I'm just a fan of Canelo's and I just like to see him in the big fights. So, uh, yeah, I like to see him fight Callum or Billy Joe or, or Triple G. You know, that's what, that's what we want. That's what the fans want. But, uh, you know, we're, uh, it is a business and, um, you know, I'm not in, in his business. So we just have to wait and see. But, uh, look, it's, it's going to be difficult. You know, it's going to be difficult for some of the big fights, you know, to be made, you know, and you wonder what's happened with Terence. Crawford, you've heard it rumoured, Kel Brook, you, you wonder what Callum's going to do, what, what's going to happen with um, Josh Warrington. There's many fighters that have, have got to get out and uh, it's not easy with no gates and, you know, especially the ones that pull in the big crowds, you know, we want to be in Leeds with 25,000 and Josh Warrington, don't we? But it's not possible at the moment. So we're just going to have to wait, a bit more patience, but at least boxing's back. At least we've had fight camp. Frank's got the BT uh, um, boys busy over there. You know, good to see Carl Frampton win uh, and back on uh, on Saturday night. Enjoyed that and Michael Conlon as well. And you know, look, boxing's back, and I think that's the most important thing at the moment. So uh, the biggest night we've had since I think since February and since we were in Vegas for Wilder Fury is upon us on Saturday. Uh, White Povetkin, Taylor Pursoon, as you said, a, a fantastic card. It's a uh, it's it's one you don't want to miss. Absolutely. Adam Smith, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV this cold but dry. Well, maybe we'll get a morning. game of cricket out later. You're, dress, you're you, definitely dressed for it. I am today. dressed for it. I did that on purpose today, Coogan, just to remind people that we should get a game out there. But despite your Sri Lankan heritage, I believe you're not that. Not really. No? No. A bit weird, I know. No but spin bowling? I've actually got no interest in cricket whatsoever, hence the fact that I haven't been out We'll, we'll get him out there later. Eddie can play a bit. I tell you what, Tom Hamp, the cameraman from the last couple of weeks, he can play. Yeah. Dark horse. Darren Barker, so competitive. So can be. He'll be, be out there later as well. It'll be good fun. Thank you very much, Adam Smith. Shy, I, the life won't bring you down too far.